I'm Andrea Donsky, co-founder of Morphus, and today I am here with the amazing Julie Daniluk, and Aww. Julie is going to do a quick intro of herself, and we're going to be talking about a really important topic when it comes to perimenopause and menopause. We're talking heart health. So Julie, take it away. Introduce yourself. Oh, well, thank you. I uh, just absolutely love nutrition. I've been an anti-inflammatory nutritionist for well over a decade and have been in love with teaching nutrition for 20 years and have been really delving into the topic of hormonal balance as of late, you know, entering into that change of life oh. and trying to do it as gracefully as possible. Embracing your change, like you say, <laughs> yeah, right? Embracing absolutely. your change. Yes. So Julie, so I've known Julie for a really long time. As she said, she is a nutritionist colleague and I have tons of respect for you. So Aww. I'm really happy to have you on our show today Thank because you. we're gonna talk about heart health. And one of the things, and I know Julie, you have an amazing, well, amazing yet scary story that yes. you're gonna share with all of us. And I think we should start there because I wanna understand why did you decide to write a book on hormones, people in men women in menopause and heart health? Well, I actually was prescribed bioidentical estrogen, as so many ladies mm, are, yes. when our hormones start to dip by a naturopathic doctor. Yeah. And I went ahead and said, okay, this will be wonderful. I'll avoid all those pitfalls of having dipping estrogen. You know, I thought it'll strengthen my bones. It'll keep my skin nice. It'll prevent any hot flashes. What a great idea. So I went ahead and took it. And within a few months, I was just flying a big long haul flight from the West Coast to Montreal, and I ended up having a actual heart incident, mm. which they may think was a hormonal heart attack. Mm. Now, the reason why I can't know is because I was so healthy at the time that my husband said to me, you couldn't possibly be having a heart attack, <laughs> even though I was having uh, the these head spins, I was not able to see the floor, I was having profound heart palpitations, mm. I was incredibly weak, I had teeth chattering, I was having joint pain in my left shoulder, I was having all these symptoms. Wow. I said to him, I feel like it could be a heart attack because I'm scared I won't wake up. And he oh said, oh Julie, you you're fine. Let's just tuck you in. You'll be okay. Did he say it was anxiety he, or related well, to Well, I don't else? have anxiety, so I knew it couldn't be bad. Wow. So then I, I went to bed really scared, and when I woke up, I noticed my heart just wasn't able to recalibrate and get back. So I finally got an appointment with a doctor, and he said, oh, we'll probably find on your stress test that we we just knock it up to some stress, right? Anxiety. See, exactly, it's, 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 right? Common That's thing. such a common thing that women yeah. are just not really validated as having potential heart issues, heart issues yes. especially when you're young and fit and healthy. Can we just, uh, I'm going to ask yeah, you if you're sure. okay to share how old you are, because I do think that's sure. an, important, an important question. I'm 49 and a half. 49 and a half, okay. So I'm about to hit 50 and very much uh, going through the change right now, and I can't believe how he looked at me and he said, I'm sorry to report, but I think you may have had a SCAD. And I'm like, what's a SCAD? Wow. That is a, is a sudden coronary arterial dissection, okay. uh, otherwise known as a hormonal heart attack. Okay. And what's interesting is that 80% of SCAD sufferers are women who've had a severe hormonal flux, like I would have had when I went on bioidentical, bioidentical. estrogen. Wow. So when you have these big swings in your hormones, it can actually affect the lining of your blood vessels and you can have an unfortunate tear or dissection where you have this dreadful amount of blood accumulate in that space and creates a blood clot. And I so happen to carry factor V Leiden, which is that dreadful gene uh, responsible for extra blood clotting. And both of us mm -hmm. carry the gene where I, I, sorry for outing you, but oh, that's okay. we, we we're both very carry, open at Morpheus, yeah, exactly. we're very open. <laughs> we both carry the gene that makes us unable to metabolize estrogen properly. So unfortunately for most women, hormone replacement might be a huge godsend for them. But if you're amongst the one tenth of women who do not metabolize estrogen correctly, watch out taking estrogen, even bioidentical estrogen, mm. because you do not have the capacity to break it down to the right metabolites and get rid of it. And when you have elevated levels of estrogen, you're putting yourself at risk for higher blood clots. Mm -hmm. So that's what's so scary about this. I have like the shivers, even though it's not cold in here, because to talk about this topic roused me up. Mm -hmm. Women need to know that 
that hormone replacement therapy is not a blanket solution. It's not even bioidentical. Not even and, not even bioidentical. And a lot and being in the natural health space and having been yeah. in this space for 20 years, a lot of natural practitioners will recommend bioidentical hormones. Yes. And the thing that's important, and I, I love that we're talking about this, is because we know, you know, HRT, we know that the, you know, a lot of the medical community doesn't endorse it because of the women's health study, the women's health initiative, yes. right? Where it and I guess you could talk to the stats of some of the things that it could cause, but the bioidentical hormone, that it's not as well known and mm -hmm. as well known to cause issues. And I know myself, I was on progesterone and bioidentical hormones for a long time. And when I had my genetic testing, which you can go and see the interview we did with Monster Muhammad from the DNA company. Amazing. Brilliant man. We will link to it below. And we'll also put something at the end of this video so you can link, you can click on that as well. And he was explaining that it's not for everybody because everybody has different genetics. So when I met Mansoor, he had said to me, Andrea, if you're on any type of hormone replacement or bioidentical, you have to come off it now because you have the gene that doesn't metabolize estrogen pop properly. Yes. So it's really important that we get our genetics tested, ladies. And again, we will put a link below if you're interested in getting your hormone test. The DNA company has a specific test. It's for their female hormones yes. that you can get. And we have a special code for you. So you can and link if, below. If you so happen to carry the SIP, the SIP, 1B1 CG variant. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> you won't be taking any estrogen. Yeah. Um, but it is scary that 60% of women on each, sorry, you increase your risk of having a hormonal incident, a hormonal related heart attack, whether it be stroke or heart attack, by 60%. Wow. If you go on HRT. So if you have the genetic variant or just in general? In general, mm, women on wow. HRT increase their risk of having a heart attack or stroke by 60%. Wow. So we really want to make sure to protect you and give you lots of things that will help to naturally thin your blood, naturally support your arteries, yeah. naturally reduce inflammation so that you're prepared. And that's why I created the book healing the hormonal heart so that women had all the data, all the testing, mm. all their options presented in front of them so that they can make a wise decision for themselves. Now, let's talk about, let's go back to the foundation of why do women take HRT or BHRT? Well, they take it because they feel that they don't want to hit the wall. Let's face it, our mothers often would hit a wall. They would, they would go from young and vibrant and positive to feeling irritable and having horrible hot flashes and being unbelievably sad and feeling gutted by the Sounds change. Sounds like a lot of the signs and symptoms that, we, we came up with 61 of them, by the way, <laughs> and we're counting. So if yeah. any of you have other symptoms and signs of being in perimenopause or menopause, please leave a comment <laughs> below because yeah. we're collecting them. Yeah. But it sounds like the signs and symptoms of being at this point of our life. Yeah, exactly. So, so just to say you do not need to hit the wall that way. And let's remember in parts of Asia and Africa, women go through the change and they don't even have a word for menopause because they transition so gradually mm. and naturally because their adrenals take over for their ovaries and there's a nice smooth transition. So I believe that if we can nourish our adrenals, mm. then we don't have to have profound hot flashes. And that's why I'm so excited about all the work I'm doing with yoga and restorative mm. practices and, and adaptogens, which mm -hmm. no doubt oh, you're gonna amazing. get into huge. It's healthy, because, ashwagandha, I mean, rhodiola, they're amazing, the adaptogenic herbs, which and helps with balance. And they've helped me so much yeah. that I am virtually hot flash free without being on bioidentical estrogen and yeah. you know one thing they don't talk about bioidentical estrogen and progesterone is damn expensive these creams that you put on they can cost hundreds of dollars a month oh, really? and they were not making me feel any better they were actually making me more irritable which was shocking to me I found I feel like myself now mm. that I'm just using completely natural, natural remedies and nutrition to heal my hormonal imbalance. So, so many questions that I have that I want to pick up on the little <laughs> things that you said. So let's start with the adrenals. Yeah. So as, I mean, we're in a society where we have a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety mm. and we're running ragged and we're always in that sympathetic state where we're kind of trying to catch, you know, catch our tails. And one of the things that I know that you just talked about is that when, so our adrenals, Mm -hmm. take over for our ovaries when we enter into menopause. Yes. And if our, we enter into menopause with those exhausted adrenals, which by the way, 99.9% .9 of us have. <laughs> I mean, hello. Like, it's a modern you know, life. Yeah. You know, it's a modern yeah. life. So a lot of us enter into menopause already with those fatigued adrenals, adrenal yes. fatigue. So yes. what are some of the things that we could do? So let's say 
people who are watching who aren't in menopause yet, maybe they're in menopause, maybe they're a little bit, they're kind of in their early 40s, yeah, yeah, early 40s, perimenopause. Are there things that they can do now at yes. that stage to help nourish their adrenals? I absolutely want everyone to double down on dark leafy green veggies to provide lots of vitamin B6. Lots of avocados, that's the good news. We all get more guacamole. <laughs> Yay, Very good. Avocados vitamin B, yeah, vitamin yeah. B6 is, is a spectacular thing to uh, take and also vitamin B5 for nourishing adrenals. And as you, you spoke to ashwagandha, there's a beautiful array. What I love about um, adaptogens is there's one in pretty much every part of the world, whether it be Siberian ginseng, mm -hmm. whether it be, um, goodness, there's, there's so many good ones. I love the, I love uh, another one besides ashwagandha. Tulsi. Tulsi, Rhodiola. yeah. Yeah, I love yeah, them. So many of them. There's so many good ones. And there's one from Asia that's on the tip of my tongue. And I, I know it's coming back to me. But we want to embrace adaptogens because they help you adapt to the level of stress that you're going through. I love that the, the, the actual essence, the meaning of the word is right there in mm, the title. Yes. Adaptogen means you, you really adapt. Helps and us cope better. Exactly. With stress. Exactly. Which is really what's happening when women are getting irritable is our fuse is shortened mm. when our hormones are kind of dampening down. When we don't have as much of the progesterone and estrogen, we start to feel like we yeah. can't cope. And unfortunately, your sleep can go. Gets, yeah, so affected. we definitely want to help you with that as well. Now, the other thing you were saying, you were talking about as we get it. So you, you talked about the issue that you had with your heart mm. and the SCAD is what you said. Well, I they thought I had a SCAD. They thought I just want to okay. double back that I recovered very, very quickly. Okay. So they actually think it could have been a blood clot or a, or a cardiac spasm. Okay. Because I actually recovered. And it might be the fact that I just dramatically did every single thing I had to do to get better. Mm -hmm. But they were like, wow, the, the, the fast recovery would speak to the fact that you probably didn't have a SCAD because SCAD can put you out for six months to a year. Okay, I was gonna say, like, was there any residual damage to your heart mm. or did they find out, you know, okay, so. Well, I did have a, a short spell of, for about two months where I couldn't even climb stairs without having Shortest some, breath. no, a little bit of chest pain, mm. which is, <laughs> there's no little bit of chest pain that doesn't make you scared shitless. Yes. If you don't want me saying, it's, su it's such a scary yeah. symptom. So, but, I will say that uh, embracing physical fitness every single day for 683 days has a way of making you very uh, robust and able to cope with what life throws your way. So I highly recommend uh, getting a fitness tracker to help you close your rings and keep you accountable mm. to getting fit. Because so many women, through that change of life, we let go of physical fitness. Mm -hmm. And I really want everyone to remember to double down on it. 100%. Especially you know, stress relieving. 100%. Yeah. And even for me, I was, I remember when I, before I had kids, I was waking up at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, going to the gym, working out. And then once I had my kids, I mean, it just, I have three, it just wasn't feasible. And recently, and being a nutritionist and being in the health industry for 20 years, yeah. I was like, wait a second, I'm doing everything when it comes to food and lifestyle, but I was missing that exercise piece. And let yeah. me tell you, so Randy, co-founder of Morphous, she's been working out for a long time and she's like, you got to go to the gym, you got to go to the gym. And I started going to the gym this year, or last year, and I have to tell you, first of all, I feel amazing. Yeah. My, like my mood, just my mood itself has improved it's dramatically. It so, is. you know, the fact that, you know, it helps to balance whatever it's doing, those serotonin levels, the yeah. dopamine, whatever yeah. it's doing in our body, it is so important, ladies. So if you're not currently exercising, get moving. And I just want to speak yeah. to my inflammatory crowd for a moment because I, of course, my whole focus is the anti-inflammatory mm. world. And I have a lot of people with arthritis and any sort of inflammatory mm. disease, you feel like you can't exercise. You might feel intolerant to exercise. But if you are, then find micro movement. Mm -hmm. Like even doing Pilates on a mat at the level that you can do it can completely change your even mood. Even walking or maybe exactly. even wa swimming. In water, water, water really walking is, yeah. is amazing. Any, anybody, yeah. whether no matter what level, we can meet you where you're at and take it up a notch. It's so totally let's possible. talk about exercise and heart health since we're talking sure. heart health today. Sure. So maybe people are newer to exercise or maybe they're thinking, okay, I really have to go to the gym. Mood aside, which we know is really good, and stress relieving, mm. why is it important for our hearts? It's so important because we actually need to focus on healing our heart rate variability. So your heart actually has the ability to scale up the number of beats per minute. And if you never challenge your heart, if you never ever do cardiac 
um, exercise and change the rate at which your heart beats, it actually really weakens the heart. So when we do a real different uh, amount of exercise and we try dance on, and then we might another day go for a really quick sprint like they do with high intensity high interval training. Hit. I was right? say, exactly. exercising is yeah. awesome. Amazing. Yeah. So by changing up the heartbeats, they've noticed how amazing it is for your heart and also how incredibly stress relieving it is when you can adapt to that next level of cardiovascular uh, fitness, hmm. all of a sudden everything else becomes really easy. So climbing up the stairs with bags of groceries become a cinch because all of a sudden you're not winded by the simplest right. little thing in your life, which is so important. Talking about HRV or heart rate variability, you're going to see that is going to be something that is going to be spoken about more and more. And we're now doing a human clinical trial with, on HRV with a new supplement that we're wow. testing. Yes, wow. very Fancy. exciting. I know yeah, about I HRV. So it's pretty exciting stuff that we have in the works mm. right now. Morphus, we're so excited. Yay. So exciting. <laughs> I love it. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so let's talk. Since you're an expert on nutrition, yeah. and you have been for many, many years, let's talk about heart healthy foods. Oh, yeah. Very oh. important to be, you know, obviously exercising and yes. then lifestyle, mm. diet. But yes, I will say food makes the largest difference. It makes such a difference because so many people jump to, oh, I'm on a medication, I got it handled. Absolutely what you eat will change the game for how your heart ages. So number one, I would say is omega-3. Mm -hmm. We need to, it's basically like putting some lovely, uh, shall we say, clog lubricant, lubricant <laughs> down there that is going to help remove um, and break up any sort of dissonance happening in the arteries. So I wanted to say omega-3 at a good dosage, and I should what probably let, I mean, I'll say anywhere between 1,500 to 3,000, okay, yeah. depending on, on how much you need, is, is incredibly good per day. Now, does it and matter if it's from fish, is it a fish oil? Can it be, you know, a vegetarian or vegan source of omega-3? Vegan, vegan oils are excellent because, of course, they are free of toxins. Just make sure that they're pre-converted. Okay. So the big thing is, is ALA is the standard omega-3 found in vegetarian oils like flax and chia. Mm -hmm. yep. But we want to actually make sure that we have eicosapentaenoic acid, EPA, and also DHA, otherwise known as docosahexaenoic acid. The big those words. <laughs> EPA and DHA have to be there. Yeah. And those are only found in algae oils that are actually pre-converted already. Okay. So I would go for an expensive, lovely algae oil vegan supplement if you want to stay vegan. Otherwise, tiny, tiny little fish that are screened. Yeah. So the mackerel, herring, anchovy, sardines screened to make sure that they're low in toxins also are an excellent choice because we really see high, high amounts of the anti-inflammatory oils. I remember I was at one of your talks and you were talking about, is it EPA keeps the pain away? Like you yes. had this cute little acronym. <laughs> yes. that, so tell everybody what that acronym yeah. is. I think it was actually very smart. So EPA does uh, eats eat the your pain, pain away. away. Right. Yes, EPA eats your pain away because it is profoundly anti-inflammatory and it works on many different levels with heart health. It reduces your triglycerides, it reduces your low density lipoproteins, it actually helps to reduce your blood pressure which mm. is super important and it also reduces your beats per minute. So holy mac, you have an all-in-one heart healer in omega-3 so that's like the gold standard. Now if people now, are, don't want to necessarily take a supplement, would eating enough fish help? Sure, and algae and seaweed and nuts and seeds, they're all good choices. But can we choices. get enough from eating it? Or does it, you know, if you want to get a heart healthy dosage, yeah. I would think that we would need to take a supplement to yeah, get there. Yeah, I mean, would if you live in Japan because they consume mm, literally right, like 10 to 15 servings a week. But here, landlocked in Ontario, I can't say we <laughs> eat fish that often, right? Right. So that's why- it's clean fish. Right? Yeah, exactly. So it's an excellent idea. Uh, to that's one of the things that I see as an important supplement for sure But also I consider it food and put it inside my salad dressings because it can be a delicious salad dressing For example the algae oil that's lemon flavored mm -hmm. Just throw just it on a salad, salad. salad and oh, make it part idea. of food or put it in your smoothie So you don't feel like you have to take so many pills because mm -hmm. I find people can max out you know, we really can only so, handle yeah, five to seven before we're like, okay, enough of this, right? right. Interesting. So yeah. put it into your salad dressing or sprinkle mm. it on your thing. That's actually a good idea. Yeah, But definitely. you don't want to heat it. So that's the thing. Never heat omega-3. Yeah. 
the number three means that there's a lot of open spaces on its carbon chain and will oxidize really quickly. So yeah, so, so keep it has it, to be in the fridge. Keep it in the fridge, and that's yeah. the other thing. All right, so okay. what are some other foods that we can I eat? would absolutely love people to up their vitamin B content by focusing on every green mm -hmm. vegetable they can possibly eat, whether it be asparagus or celery, or you chard, name it, or chard, or any of those greens provide. I, th I find it cool, if we look at the Latin root word, folate mm -hmm. comes from foliage, and anything green provides us with these this important B vitamin that reduces something called homeocysteine, which is that very negative um, inflammatory marker. So we are able to reduce inflammation by focusing on it. And the great news is folic folate, which is different than folic well, acid. Because folate is a natural version, is the natural we get from version of vitamin B9, yeah. is going to be incredibly helpful not only for your liver and detoxification and your heart. It's also good for mental health, mm. which is extremely important for ladies as they age. So a lot of ladies will say to me, Julie, I don't digest veggies well. I run for the hills. I can't stand how they make me feel bloated or gassy. Well, then it's time to cook them. And that's mm. why I created yeah. the book, The Hot Detox, yep. because it's all about soothing and warming and adding spices and making sure that your belly is happy so that we can get all this produce into you mm -hmm. because it's important to get that produce no matter what. Seven to 10 servings of produce per day. Mm -hmm. You don't have to all be green, but it has to be produce. Or you can throw it into your smoothies. For example, yeah. kale, right, is amazing. It's high in folate, so you can yeah. throw it into a smoothie in the morning. I know I have a couple of friends that make these smoothies and they literally throw in every type of veggie <laughs> and they're like, yeah. look, I'm so healthy. But if yeah. you don't want to actually, if you, or you, if you could cook it, if you have trouble digest, yeah. digesting you it, or if you're looking, it, yeah. saute it, oh my gosh, I love Oh, the sauté greens. Oh, it's so oh, good. Oh my gosh, I, I love did a, it. I did a, a collard greens. Mm. Oh my goodness. Like <laughs> thinly sliced yesterday and threw in a whole bunch of seasonings that just my whole family so went good. wild for it. So, so good. Well, we need that recipe. Oh, yeah. Follow Julie on Instagram. Mm. What's your Instagram handle? It's just my name, at Julie Danlock. Perfect. Sure. So make sure you follow her because she posts yeah. amazing pictures Thank of you. food and like all this yummy Thanks, stuff. Thanks, so. I appreciate that. And yeah. I also have 50 new recipes in my heart book. The Healing Hormonal Heart. And we're going to put a link to the book yeah. below because yes. I know that you're selling it on your, I believe, on your website. Yes. So yes. we'll put a link to it below for you to purchase the book because Thank it is you. definitely, if you're concerned or just want to understand heart health in yes. general and how to eat for your heart. I think that's, it's really important. So we'll put a link cool. below so everybody could uh, okay. get to it. Oh my there. goodness. Thank you. Okay. So we've got, so just to recap, we've got yes. omega threes are really good for our heart. We've got mm. green vegetables, which have the B yep. vitamins and the folate, the B nine. What else? We're going to go to something very delicious now and talk about berries because anything mm. dark berries, and we've got to we got to add ourselves about the wine at nine, ladies. We are all like, "Hey, <laughs> I need wine. It's high in resveratrol, <laughs> right, Amazing. for heart health." Right. Just a reminder that you can get the same resveratrol from a handful of Concord grapes than you would from a glass of, glass wine. of wine. And I will say that that's one thing I've had to give up through menopause because. It causes hot flashes so profoundly. Red wine is oh, yeah. so heating yeah. that it really does overwhelm your liver and create more potential for hot yeah. flashes. So red meat, you often need to park that if you're dealing with hot flashes and also the wine. And I've really doubled down on other resveratrol sources. Any of those like? dark purple pigments. Well, did you know that oh, it's also, so yeah, it's they're, really good. Little, they're really delicious. Yeah, but I'm also a big fan of, did you know there's quite a bit of resveratrol in the skin of a, of a pistachio. Oh, you're kidding. That oh. red skin is right. actually, actually resveratrol as well. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so you can get it from those dark pig pigments and it's just so good for you. And of course, resveratrol is profoundly anti-inflammatory and amazing for healing for heart, your heart. For our heart. Yeah. The interesting thing about the resveratrol and the wine, and it's so funny because a lot of women, like you're saying, the wine at nine, and it's a thing, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to go have my glass of wine. And I know for me, alcohol, I can't even have it anymore. Yeah. Being in menopause, like you said, it creates crazy hot flashes for me. Yeah, it is like, not, I can't it's even not go my there. friend. Yeah. Can't even go there. And, yeah. and the effect that it has on our liver, exactly, and our hormones. So if yeah. you are suffering from anything or if you're going through hot flashes or just if you want to, I think that this is an important conversation because I do yeah. think a lot of, um, I do think some people get a little bit like, wait a second, I really love my glass of wine at night or I love drinking my alcohol. And you know, sometimes we we say, okay, well, you know, if you want, it's like as nutritionists, what we'll yeah. limit, right? Yeah. But I think when it comes to menopause and hot flashes, and if you are trying to really limit the, you know, not wanting to get those hot flashes, I think it's an important thing to say, like alcohol does 
create that. Right? Yes. And I, I just want to mention that a lot of women tell me, oh, I have a glass of wine so I can sleep. Mm. But we now know that alcohol knocks you out, but that does not mean you're sleeping. Right. You actually will end up waking up at two and three and four in the morning because we know in traditional Chinese medicine that the liver is most active between one and three in the morning. So if you're drinking, you're going to wake back up. And then when you're up, you're fighting constantly, you know, tons of hot flashes often happening from the alcohol. Taking the blankets off, putting them back on, <laughs> yeah. and then you're freezing. Yes. Sound familiar? The yeah. night sweats? It's yeah. A, which can lead to the night sweats, right? Which yeah. Which is it. So, really you know, like anything, listen to your body, ladies. If you feel that, you know, that's something, a symptoms that you're suffering from, consider, you know, not having any alcohol. You know what mm. really triggers hot flashes for me are ch is chocolate. Yes. Oh, chocolate can be a big one. Such a bummer. I know. The oh. the any any caffeine source really can do it. Yes. Because, it, of course, we're stimulating our adrenals and we have to nourish our adrenals. Yeah. So finding that energy from an authentic place is really helpful. And I am going to give a shout out to CoQ10 right now. Mm, There's huge. Two Two forms yes. of CoQ10. There's standard u ubiquinone. ubiquinone. The okay. ubiquinone is the standard form that is in a lot of supplements. But I want everyone to look for the high-end Cadillac it's that you just mentioned. The, the ubiquinol, which is the yeah. real high-end pre-converted form of CoQ10. And that's what I've really needed instead of caffeine to give me that gentle lift mm -hmm. because it helps you drive wonderful energy production through your Krebs cycle so that you have your mitochondria working correctly. Because mitochondria breakdown is where so many women after 35 just find they're exhausted. They don't have that authentic That's energy. That's the next big study now, right now, is all talking about cellular health and mm. mitochondrial health. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's you want to have the energy in the cell, which yes. provides energy to our body. So that's interesting. Yeah. So is there a time of the day that we should be taking ubiquinol, or is yeah. there a, okay, so what time I really take love it? taking uh, my ubiquinol first thing in the morning to give me that lift, or at this time of day, here I am, you know, we're, we're recording in the afternoon. Yeah. Do you need that little gentle lift the at three noon kind to of two like o'clock? <laughs> exactly, but never take ubiquinol before bed because you don't want to have that second wind. You want right. to go with the second, the first wave of fatigue. Go with that 10 p.m., it's time to sleep. And if you can hit the first window, you'll notice you'll get an extra hour or two of sleep, which is amazingly oh, important for great. healing your adrenals. Healing the adrenals is, is yeah, is so important. No, I, I love this conversation. It's my obsession. Yeah, because, and it's a hard thing to heal yeah. too, because we're constantly in that cycle of sympathetic, and then yeah. we're like kind of running on, you know, on, on our adrenaline, and it's a, it's definitely an important thing. So yeah, one of the things that I know that when it comes to HRV, we're going to come back to that, you know, heart rate variability for a second, and really helping nourishing our adrenals is meditation and just deep breath work and relaxation. And this, I am, I am your you're the epitome of type A personality. Let me, let me, I'm going to say, I mean, it, I really am. And for me, the longest time I would hear like, oh, just go meditate. I'm like, wait a second. I cannot turn off my monkey brain. I cannot just go meditate. So I found something that works well for me. So you can do guided visual, like visual, is it guided meditation or, yeah. you know, you know, listening, having my headphones on and listening to somebody speak because my mind is constantly wandering. And then they're, you know, they'll say like, if your mind's wandering, bring it back. So I'm like, oh yeah, that's me. Right? Okay. <laughs> so, and like journaling, just doing different things or sitting, even if it's five minutes a day, like you don't have to, the old way of thinking was like, let's do it for a half an hour and even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, writing in a journal, sitting down, deep breathing, do 10 breaths in and out. All of this makes such a difference. So, and I think you would agree that taking care and nourishing our adrenals, really coming down to that breath work and that meditation. Oh my goodness. Breath work is, is a huge part of my life. I'm actually a free diver. So breath work is mm, a oh core, my gosh. core thing. Yes. And my, my brother's a wonderful yoga instructor. And he taught me that when you breathe out twice as much as you breathe in. So you breathe in for five, breathe out for 10. Oh, okay. Doubling your exhale switches you into relaxation. So you go from fight or flight, which is your sympathetic mode, yep. to your relaxation mode, your parasympathetic, simply by doubling your exhale. Nice. So that's been an amazing tool for me, which I've used everywhere, whether I'm about to go on Marilyn Dennis or whether I'm you know, nervous about nervous test or results whatever or whatever it is, you have control to switch yourself into relaxation. Let's do it. I think every, let's try it. Yes, everybody. I think amazing. once we're talking about it, let's try it. Okay, so everyone okay. sit down, whether you're sitting or in your chair, take yeah. us through, Julie. Great, so we're gonna breathe in, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. We'll do a little shorter. In, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can really feel it in your body. Do you see it's how just, just on that second or third one, you it just, just start to down-regulate? Totally. So if this is something like, mm. and again, it doesn't take very long. That took us, you know, not very long at all. 30 seconds. Yeah. Do it in the morning. Do it oh, before you yeah. go to bed. Just try to incorporate it at some point during your day. Your boss dresses you out. Take a loo break. <laughs> do it on the john. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right? That's where I do it. I just, anywhere I can steal away right before I go on the Marilyn Dunn show, I will steal away to the washroom and just do a little breathing practice just to feel very centered. Yeah. And then I can show up and be really present to have the conversation. Yeah. Or in yeah. your car when you're angry at the person next to you, <laughs> just cut you off. Just be like, yeah. Instead of like flipping them off. Yeah. <laughs> it's so that. honest. I love it. Yeah. Right. Let's talk some more food. Sorry. Uh, I love amazing. this new conversation because these are mm. easy things that we can do to yeah. change and to tweak. So what's Absolutely. Food? Okay. Well, I just want to really speak to magnesium for a mm. moment. Oh my God. <clears throat> Magnesium is all about stress relief, all about hormonal balance, so important. And where are some delicious sources you may not think about? One of the big ones is hemp hearts, because mm. hemp hearts are incredibly high in magnesium. We're talking, um, goodness me, I think two ounces provide something crazy like, what is it, 120%. Uh, don't quote me on that. But I know that uh, I will say hemp hearts are one of the most incredible plant based ways to get your magnesium and they're so delicious and I too absolutely by the way. love them they're creamy they go in dips into yeah. sauces into smoothies and you get yummy hemp milk yeah literally water hemp seeds a date and a little bit of salt like it is so good and creamy and you can use it for cereal you can drink mm. it with like whatever you want i know you love that instead of almond milk that has all this waste that hemp it's hearts so dissolve. Too, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hemp, I love it. Exactly, they dissolve, and you're using mm. the whole hemp heart. So very easy to do. I love that hemp mm. and they're so good sprinkled on your salad. Yes. Oh my gosh, so I love good. hemp hearts. So that's a really good one. So magnesium not only helps to deal with all the cramping that people might be experiencing, but it helps to vasodilate. It helps to relax the heart and all of the veins and arteries in the body, so that we're actually able to cope with the stressors of life. And considering that about 80% of us are deficient in magnesium, yes. you know, it's one of those minerals that we should be taking every single day. And yeah. you know what's an interesting story about magnesium is that if you hit the eye twitches, yes. you know, and by the way, we're talking about it, it regulates muscles, right? So mm. our heart oh, yes. is a strong body, is a muscle. Yeah. So very important for our heart. But even if you get like mm. little twitches or anything that's going on, you know that your body's telling you that you need a little bit more magnesium. So, yeah. you know, different. What are some other sources of magnesium? Oh, well, I mean, magnesium is in most nuts or seeds. So that's the good news. And of course, a lot of things like halibut is a really good source. So mm -hmm. magnesium is actually quite easy to find. But it's when people have a refined food diet that they become terribly deficient. Right. So if you're eating any junk food, remember that when we eat white sugar and white flour, it's like a credit card that robs you of all the nutrition out of your system to metabolize that sugar. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important to eat whole healthy food. Yes, well yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> well said, and stay away from that white stuff. Yeah. It, is, it is, like, has zero nutrition. Yeah, that's I, why I my it. next book will really help people break up with cravings because I realized there's a big difference between what you know to do and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And they need to help close the gap mm -hmm. on people's cravings. So right. the whole thing is how to actually break up with your sweet lover called sugar. <laughs> called sugar, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's true though. Ways to leave your sweet lover. It <laughs> could be the That's subtitle like of that. the book. That's very cute, I yeah. like that. Now when it comes to heart health, and we're talking about eating all these good foods. So we've got our exercise, We've got our nutrition. Yes. Is there anything else that you could that you would say that helps with strengthening our hearts? Emotional therapy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because so That's many exactly women exactly where I was hoping you would go. Yeah, <laughs> go into perimenopause and menopause with the baggage that hurts your heart. And it's important for us to work on forgiveness, work on releasing trauma. And I feel that the therapy that I've had called EMDR. That stands for the eye rapid eye, eye, movement, eye yeah it's so rapid EM is, is eye movement desensitization and reprogramming EMDR and why I love it so much is that it's actually helped me address the trauma when it happens 
and let it go, put it in a little box, label it, put it away properly so that I'm not constantly re-triggered in the present. Mm -hmm. And it has made me more loving and compassionate to my family members. It's allowed me to go and do really scary things like be on stage in front of 1500 people without freaking out because you become more brave when we park our old childhood trauma. So if people can really work on that, remember our heart is affected by emotional trauma the most. Mm -hmm. it, that's why we always talk about our broken heart, right? Mm -hmm. So we can really heal our heart on that emotional level that will have massive repercussions and just create a more joyful life. Because I can say the one gift of having a heart issue is that I had to work on it, mind, body, and soul. Right. <laughs> and I, I, I've, I've come out of it stronger than ever. And I'm so grateful. The silver lining of the situation has provided me a strength that, that I'm so grateful for. And thank you for providing the platform to talk mm, about that. No. I'm getting all choked up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's so true and it's so important. And I think as, especially as we get into perimenopause and menopause, and I love that you said that because we do carry, listen, we've got all of our life, our life experiences, and many of us are in our 40s, our 50s, and our 60s as we're kind of getting into this change, mostly mid, mostly 50s. Yeah. And if we don't deal with past traumas, past old, you know, things that have happened to us, whether they're big or small traumas, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. A trauma is a trauma to each of us individually, then it's going to carry through and it's going to affect, like you said, affect certain things like our heart, but also our relationships. Mm. And even by, not even our relationships only with our family and friends, but ourselves. Mm. Right. So we talk about self-love. What does that mean? Even mm. self-love. Right. Mm. So it's it's dealing with things, removing those old pro programs so that we can enter. We can embrace our change in a new way, in a new light and use Beautiful. the experiences that we've had for those 50 odd years, 40 mm. odd years to really, you know, help us navigate this new time in our life. That's very beautifully said. Great job. Thank I you. just really appreciate that. And so one last thing I will say, when people say, oh, this is really woo-woo, you know, I, I don't need to talk about my, my, my emotions, I'm good. I just want you to remember that just having that constant spike of cortisol, your stress hormone, when you come across something that deeply triggers you, you know, you're annoyed at your children or you're frustrated by your senior elder who is who's really being impactful, when you become more bulletproof because you've parked your trauma, you actually do downregulate your nervous system and can become more bulletproof. And that's mm -hmm. when you feel like you have the opportunity to feel authentic joy. And is that not why we're here? <gasps> that is totally why we're here. And I love that you're using the words yeah. like, you know, downregulate. Are you familiar with Mast and Kip? Yes. Oh my course. God. Yes. His we work. Actually came up through Hay House together. Oh. We, we've hung out. He's awesome. I love his work. Yeah, I've yeah. heard him speak He's before. He is big incredible. Shout out. Big yeah. shout out to Mastin yeah, Kip and yeah. working and dealing with trauma. I am obsessed with his podcast. That's why these things are so important. It is. It is. Right? Absolutely. And I promise you, your fuse will lengthen the more you pay attention to beautiful anti-inflammatory nutrition and the healing within all these therapies. Oh my goodness. You really do have a more joyful existence. Yeah. And that's the key. Yeah, absolutely. Would you say there's anything that you'd want to share that we didn't cover today? I just really want to give people hope that you can come from really scary places and have extraordinary transformation. I love your name Thank because, you. yeah, because <laughs> I can't believe the transformations that I see. I just want to let people know, like, I've had clients that have lost 150 pounds and are now running marathons in their 50s so that you can find your strength and have an incredible pop of productivity, contribution, and joy moving into the back half, that it can be the best half mm -hmm. of your life. Because I don't want people to think like, oh my goodness, I'm rolling down the hill now. Yeah. <laughs> no, it can be the golden years. It really can be something to look forward to. You've, you've built up all this amazing productivity and success and it's time for you to relish in it and connect with your girlfriends mm -hmm. and have a great time. That's so, it. You know, yeah. I have a question before we end. You know, Randy and I talk a lot about what is our her perimenopause and what does my menopause look like? So I'm gonna ask you the question. Mm -hmm. what, and you said you were in menopause. Mm -hmm. What does your menopause look like? My menopause looks like getting into the greatest, um, the greatest strength of my entire life. So I was never a big fitness junkie. And now I'm weight training three times a week and doing fitness. I'm on 
683 days of not not hard fitness every day because that would be overdoing it, but some sort of contribution to my fitness every day. And I love that. Mm -hmm. I love, honestly, that I don't have a week of my month taken out anymore with my cycle yeah. that I can stay strong <laughs> right. and, and have this amazing zen every day. Mm -hmm. And then that amazes me because I thought I would really miss it and that I would be scary for me because I watched how my elders went through menopause and I'm like, I don't want that, right? Mm -hmm. And so it is nice to know that you can do menopause in a graceful way and to have friends who are doing it elegantly. Did you have any signs and symptoms? Like, was there anything as you were going through it, did you have, I know you said that you had a little bit of hot flashes, but was there anything, mm. how did you know you were in menopause? Well, I have to say my biggest symptom was hot flashes because when it was first happening, when you first lose your period, that's the most dramatic time and you need to learn how to balance. So initially it was, <laughs> it was, it wasn't an, a little gentle nudge. It was like, you're in menopause girl. Okay. You know? <laughs> Were you, was your cycle yeah. erratic? Did you have like, uh, yes. a lot of bleeding? Like, was no, there... no, it was erratic. Okay. And then it just, stopped. it just stopped. And when it okay. stopped, I couldn't believe like, Phew. but then, uh, you're talking about your estrogen. Yeah. My plummeted. estrogen plummeted. Okay. But I will say that traditional Chinese medicine, and the, and the meditative practices and the nutrition focus, you can get through it at velocity. Mm -hmm. And now I truly have like less than one or two flashes a month and they're very mild. Okay. So it used to feel like a hot iron sitting on my chest. And now luckily it feels really like a friendly, like, oh, it's the tropics in here. <laughs> just turn the degrees up. <laughs> so just the, take off my cardigan. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so the good news is you can get into a mode where you go, oh, this means I need to work on, on my adrenals. Maybe I should have some licorice tea now. And that's been the difference is that once you have those tools in place, you can just lean into them and notice that you have a much happier menopausal experience. Well, yes. thank you, Julie. It's thank a you, great darling. way to end the video. Yes. I love it, to end our interview. Yes, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you, and so are you. <laughs> and thank you to all of you. You are all amazing, too. And if you have any comments or any questions for Julie or myself, please leave them in the comments below because we will be answering every single one of your comments. And if you got value out of what you heard today, please share this video with anyone you feel who might want to really hear what we talked about, heart health, adrenal health, <laughs> nutrition in perimenopause and menopause. So please subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the notification bell so you are notified every time we launch a new Morphous video. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.